Hey everyone, and welcome back to part three of this tutorial series in which we are creating a building generator using geometry nodes in Blender 3.0. Alpha. Uh, if you want to be notified of upcoming installments or tutorials, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All my subscribers get notified as soon as videos go live. Or if you want to get this content a little bit earlier than YouTube, why not become a Patreon supporter? All my patrons get early access to these videos before they uh, get released for free on YouTube. Now, in this next part of the tutorial series, we're going to be doing just a couple of things. The first part is adding a roof element. This roof is going to take existing math that we've already created to drive its width and depth and cap the building that we've uh, already generated. Uh, and then in an optional part of this tutorial, I'm going to be importing some of my modular assets from some paid packs that I've got on Gumroad. I say this is optional because um, it's entirely up to you if you want to purchase those packs and plug them in yourself. Or, ideally, you could create your own assets and plug them in. But I'm going to give you the know-how on how to do that and make these buildings look a little less what's the word, brutalist or basic. So uh, without any further ado, why don't we jump into Blender and uh, let's get started. So in this final lesson, we're going to add a very simple roof. Now, as we can see here, we've got walls that are three by three. And so each tile of roof should be a three by three size. So why don't we first start off by bringing back our collection. Let's go ahead and add a cube and let's give this cube size of three units. Now, you can already see that because we added the cube inside of the collection, this is becoming some sort of an artwork that's, uh, you know, worthy of NFTing or something like that. So we get, get that cube out of there because anything in that collection is obviously going to be referenced by our node tree. So our roof, because we don't want it referenced by our node tree, has got to be on the outside. And so we're going to call this roof tile. All right, so then in front view, let's uh, zoom in here a little bit. We'll just go into wireframe mode, into edit mode there, and vertex mode. So we should probably put our, the bottom of our roof down here. The roof doesn't have to be too thick, but it definitely has to have some kind of thickness. And the, and the other thing I'm going to do to this roof is give it a bit of a bevel. So I'm gonna go Control B for bevel, and then just gonna drag across. My bevel tool will come up, so I can actually adjust the width to something a little bit more, you know, finite, okay? And this bevel is gonna make it a little bit more interesting. And finally, of course, because we need to give it this pivot point, okay, uh, the easiest way of doing this is maybe selecting that vertex. Sh Shift S, cursor to selected, out of edit mode, object, set origin to 3D cursor. And now its origin is going to match all of these other objects. Now, of course, we can move this uh, roof out of the way. Now, maybe we'll just snap it, the selection to the grid. So we've got that there. So now we can bring a roof tile into our uh, geometry tree. And we can even relabel this wall generator into building generator. Now, the good thing about the roof object is that we can use stuff that is already existing to drive it. But we do have to give it some parameters. So obviously, from everything we've done before, we already know that we will need shift A, a point instance, and we're gonna to have to set this to an object, which is going to be roof tile, okay? We don't need to give this a collection, it has to be that specific object. It's only one that we're gonna be repeating a lot of. We definitely need a grid to lay it out. So we're going to go Shift-A, Mesh Primitives, Grid. 
But of course, this grid can remain in the XY axis because this roof tile is going to be plotted along the X and the Y of the top of this building. Finally, we are going to need to transform that tool and control the transforms. So we'll go Shift A. Uh, let's grab a geometry transform node. Let's connect that grid geometry to the transform geometry. Let's connect the transform geometry output to the point instance uh, input. So far, so good. We need we have everything that is going to at least create the instance of the roof tile. But now what we need to do is to drive the translation. So once again, let's go Shift A, Vector Combine XYZ. This time, we are going to be using the X, Y, and Z for the roof tile. So how are we gonna drive the X and the Y? Well, we have to drive it with the width and the depth factor. Now we happen to have width and depth control. So why don't we take a look at the width control, the wall width, and follow this uh, node tree along. We go up. Okay, this is going multiply, subtract, and about here, that's probably the factor that we need to plug in to our X. So we'll do that right away. Now the Y should come from the depth. So again, we will follow the depth down to the, I guess it's the X as well, because the X is just rotated 90 degrees, but this time we're gonna make that go into the Y. So we'll take that factor and we'll drop it into the Y. Now the Z could come directly from the height, but of course it's gonna to have to be multiplied by the factor of the object height. So let's drop in a multiply node, Shift A, Utilities, Math, Multiply, and we'll set the second value to four, which is the height of each wall segment. That's gonna go into the Z, and we're going to control that with the wall height. There we go. Finally, we will need to control the size X, size Y, and vertex count for all of the grid control. So obviously the vertex X is going to be the wall width. So why don't we go here, vertex X. The vertex depth is going to be the wall height. Now for the size X and size Y, we obviously need to follow the width and the depth. So width would be size X. So obviously we follow the width line, it goes along here goes up here, multiply, subtract, size X, and that would be our width. So we can connect that one to the X. Now we've got to do the other X, but it's down here on the depth, and that is what connects to the size Y, All right? Okay, so now that we've got that, to neaten things up a little bit, let's get another frame in here, and let's bring all of these nodes into this frame. Okay, and let's give this frame a name. We'll call this roof. Finally, we just have to join that up to our geometry join node. So we export the roof and we import it into the geometry node and there we have our roof. So why don't we now test this very complex looking uh, noodle, okay? We don't need to look at the noodle anymore. And remember, we don't need a a actually any controls for the roof because it's basically tiling the same thing across the width and the depth. So let's test this out. Let's drop the size of the building. Okay, it's going down, it's going up. Excellent. Let's test the width of the building. Yes, it's getting wider. It's getting narrower. And let's test the depth of the building. Excellent. Now we've got a building controller, a building generator. Now, what good is this building generator? Well, here's how it works, right? We've got this plane. 
if we call this building one, all right? And we want to say duplicate that. Let's say we duplicate the plane to building two. And let's move this building across so it's its next door neighbor. We now have the ability to change some of the parameters of this building to make it look different. We can make it wider, we can make it narrower, right? And again, we can duplicate this building again. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, we'll just make this roof tile invisible as well. Let's call this building three. And we can make this taller, like more of an office block. Okay, we can make it narrower. And using exactly the same geometry node, we can generate different buildings using just these uh, four uh, extra items, this wall, window, window two, and roof tile to generate all sorts of very cool buildings all because we've created our own modifier, a geometry node set called Building Generator. But that's not the end of the story. Um, I wanna go just a little bit further now because these really basic windows and walls are kind of ugly and I have happened to model some more interesting stuff and it would fit with these dimensions of these four by three walls and windows. Full disclosure, what I'm about to import here is some paid assets. And so I'll link uh, to where you can get these libraries in the notes below, should you uh, want to. So the first thing I should do is make a new collection. I'm gonna call this collection default. I'll leave the name of this collection as collection. I'm now going to import some paid assets. And what I might do is I'll go to FBX, navigate to where I've got some, oh, let's go with the city buildings actually. Yeah, this will be really cool. We'll need some office windows. Maybe we'll take three of those and maybe some roof tiles. I'm gonna import those. Now I'm gonna drop those um, objects directly into the collection called collection. I'm going to move the ones that we created into default. Now, already I can see that this is going to be slightly problematic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to adjust these items so that they will fit with what we wanna do. Also, these roof tiles are, uh, oh no, they're, they're the right dimension, excellent. Okay, so we want these. Go back a little, is that about right? So the bevel goes out. No, we want them to be flush there. And that ought to do it for those. And then this, these roof tiles, definitely need to come down here. I'm just going to modify them ever so slightly by extruding this down to the Z, and let's just go to 3D cursor, scale Z, zero. So now I'm gonna delete this roof tile here. Uh, okay, and, and I'm gonna call this one roof tile. Now when I bring back these buildings, let's see, has this worked? We have a slight problem in that the roof tile needs to be re-referenced. So what we're going to do is take a look at roof tile and we can see that there's just going to be an issue with its centering. So let's move that back. There we go. Um, and so with some very little adjustment, I now have some more interesting office buildings. And by simply duplicating some of those planes, because they all share the building generator, each of them have independent controls so that you can create more interesting looking office blocks using the same assets. So you can get a very consistent looking city 
Um, but just, you know, where you place those objects is completely up to you. And so I hope you got a lot out of that tutorial series and have yourself your very own building generator that you can add as a modifier to any geometry that you place in your scene. If you like what you saw here in this series, um, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to be notified of any upcoming tutorial content. Or if you're feeling at all generous, why not join the ranks of my Patreon supporters? It's the support I get over at Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.